Welcome into America's Retirement Headquarters, home of the Retirement Guys Formula and America's Medicare Associates. Securities offered through Peak Brokerage Services, LLC. Advisory services offered through the Retirement Guys Formula, registered investment advisor. America's Retirement Headquarters, America's Medicare Associates, and the Retirement Guys Formula are separate and independent entities from Peak Brokerage Services, LLC. Thanks for joining us here on America's Retirement Headquarters, home of the Retirement Guys Formula and America's Medicare Associates with Nolan Baker and Scott Kirshner. My name is Chris Vaughn. And whether you're a first-time listener or you've been with us for a while, we appreciate you taking the time. Here's the number, 419-909-3319. That's 419-909-3319. And online, americasretirementheadquarters.com. On today's show, we're going to talk about why so many people have no idea whether their retirement investment choices are conservative or aggressive. We're going to talk about the fuzzy math the government has on retiree pay raises next year. Uh, but first, before we do, let me check in. Gentlemen, how are we doing this week? We are doing good, kind of in the final countdown to the holiday season. So looking forward to Christmas and a uh, great time of year, you know? Yeah, we had a great Thanksgiving and that's passed and uh, moving towards the final countdown, uh, so to speak, with Christmas. Yeah, hopefully you get past 2020 and uh, 2021 turns out to be a little bit better and a lot of different challenges that people had this year. But uh, yeah, great time and uh, we're all... Very thankful to, to be here and be back on the show again this week. Absolutely. Whether it's uh, bidding a fond farewell to 2020 or good riddance, the end of the year is upon us. And it's usually when people start thinking about a tax strategy, but a lot of us are honestly wondering if that's still going to be the case this year, because it's going to be January before we know whether the Senate is going to be controlled by Democrats or Republicans, thanks to a double runoff in my home state of Georgia coming up at the beginning of January. So guys, does that mean that we should wait or are there still tax strategies that we can consider in these last couple of weeks of the year? You know, when we do our university class, what we oftentimes talk about is there's two very important times for folks to be looking at taxes. And oftentimes people only look at their taxes one time, and that's when they're filing their taxes. But you still have a little bit of time. The clock is ticking. But once December 31st gets here, usually the things are locked in stone. So this is a, a very important time if you haven't done so yet to take a look at uh, the end of the year tax strategies. Um, we've got a website up, 2020taxroadmap.com. If you wanted to get some feedback from us, we'd be happy to help. Recently, I was uh, participating in an article that was featured in Investor's Business Daily. Uh, if you'd like to read the whole article, just stop over at our website and you can check that out. But we were talking about these year-end retirement planning tax breaks and things to kind of be aware of. You know, 2020 was a big year. A lot of things happened. There was a lot of different rule changes. Um, things like changes to required minimum distribution. So for you guys that are listening, what you may not know is, you know, they did away with required minimum distributions this year. Uh, so if you've got a distribution, there could be some strategies. If you don't want that taxable income to show up, there is some uh, ways that you can be able to put that money back if you follow what the timelines are and the, the rules. So there's also uh, early withdrawal penalties waived for 2020 if you were impacted with COVID. So if you're, again, under the age 59 and a half, uh, maybe you had a job loss and you're trying to think about ways to strategically get through these tough times. Uh, there are some strategies to avoid the 10% early withdrawal penalty, again, if you've been impacted by the coronavirus. Uh, expanded deductions, so different things that married couples can do and uh, how those deduction changes have happened, and lots of things to do. So the best thing to do is just, again, take a moment, pick up the phone, give your accountant a call, and say, hey, are there things that we should do like Roth conversions before the end of this year? Regardless of the outcome of the election, the sad reality is the government for a long time has been spending a lot more money than they have. And at some point, you know, you've got to pay that bill. You can't just keep charging up the credit card. And, you know, one of the ways that they're probably raised the bill is taxes. And then if you say, well, if they're going to raise taxes, who are they going to raise taxes on? And if you think about it, most folks' retirement account is either the biggest or the second biggest assets that somebody owns. So your retirement account, folks, could be right in the crosshairs of the government uh, for increased taxes, whether they're going to get it from you during your lifetime or get it from your kids. Uh, if you try to pass it on to your loved ones is another grab that they could come after. But there are, again, things that you can do. Uh, we'd be happy to help you out and share some of those ideas. So, Nolan, do you think that with the tax rates low right now, is it a good time for someone to open a Roth IRA and pay that tax now and, and maybe conserve some of that tax later? Um, 
like if someone were to uh, need some health insurance and uh, their reportable income, is that a way to lower their reportable income by opening a Roth now with uh, lower tax rates? So opening a Roth, the advantage that you get of that is that you're going to build tax-free wealth in the future. You don't necessarily get a tax benefit today, but the ability of deferring that again for over five years, if you're over 59 and a half, you get the ability to take that money out and be able to take out the profits tax-free too. It's also very favorable if you leave it to your children. Um, and if you think about it, you know, retirement accounts are actually one of the only thing that people don't usually aggressively try to address the tax situation. So again, if you think about a traditional retirement vehicle like an IRA or a 401k, you have not paid taxes on that and the government is not going to forget about you. Let's just say as an example, uh, look at it like a business. So think of your financial situation like a business. If you mm -hmm. have a business and that business is worth $100,000, if you owe somebody 12% this year, you owe $12,000. And so your value in that business is really 88,000, it's not 100,000. Right. So you, if your options are two things, either I can go ahead and pay the $12,000 now and be done with it, and then I maintain ownership of that asset in the future, or the other option is you can defer taxes and defer that payment to later, and at some point in the future, the government gets to decide what is their fair share. Now, if your investments are successful, which is obviously why people do this, that $100,000 should be worth more. You know, it sure. should be worth 200000 at right. some point. Mm -hmm. So would you rather pay taxes on 100000 or 200000 Would you rather pay taxes where you know the rates are at today? Or would you rather let the government decide in the future what they determine and what they consider to be the fair amount of taxes and what that rate could be in the future? Right. So it sounds like to me, pay the taxes now on that money and have when you make be on retirement and the resources may not be as high, not pay the tax on the money that you're withdrawing at that point. It's absolutely at least worth running the numbers. And everybody's situation is different. So a gentleman I met with earlier this year, he's a recent retiree. It made a ton of sense for him to convert some money to be able to stay in the same bracket that he was at. Uh, we actually ran the analysis for his mother. She's 87. Uh, when we ran the analysis for her, it didn't make sense. Sure. So everybody's situation is a little bit different. And you got to take into consideration what impact it could have on things like your Medicare premiums, too. So there's a lot to go into it. The most important takeaway, folks, is, again, run the analysis before end of the year because once uh, the ball drops – the tax rates are kind of locked in and the tax strategies are over for this year, but you still have time to do stuff. There are actionable steps you can take now before uh, the clock strikes midnight and, and we bid farewell or, like I said, good riddance to 2020. But you have to pick up the phone, run the numbers. Uh, don't worry about running the numbers on your own. This is the number you need to keep in mind, 419-909-3319. That's how you schedule a time to come in and speak with America's Retirement Headquarters, start developing that plan and figure out what you can do between now and the end of the year to set yourself up for success in the future. It may be the Roth conversion. That may be counterintuitive to what you're trying to achieve right now, but you don't know until you have that conversation. 419-909-3319 or americasretirementheadquarters.com. You know, there's been a lot of talk about how the pandemic has weakened our overall economy, even though the stock market has been mostly rising. Equity strategist Bob Dahl tells Fox Business that a full economic recovery won't come until, well, you and I start spending some money. Consumer has saved during this period more than $1 trillion unspent income, partly because uh, they can't do things they used to do, and partly because they're scared to do things even they can do. So the consumer has a lot more buying power as the light moves from red to yellow to green. So the consumer will be a key part of uh, getting us out of the mess that we find ourselves. So I have to ask, does that mean that an economic recovery is in sight? And if it is, uh, does that mean that it's safe to start maybe being a little more riskier with our retirement funds? Should investors be conservative or aggressive right now? Well, you know, if you look at the numbers, the market obviously had a major sell-off when COVID came out earlier this year. And then what you did is you had the government dump trillions of dollars back on the market and mm -hmm. the economy. And so now we're back to record highs in the market. You know, here we're kind of finishing up the year. Hopefully we get a what's called Santa Claus rally for out the rest of the year. 
you know, short term, really, it's anybody's guess what the market would do, and it can go in either direction. I just do know that, uh, to me, what I would say is the market has given investors a second chance. And folks, you don't often get a second chance right now. So what I would tell people is, if the decline that experienced earlier this year was painful for you, and that was creating concern for you. Now that the market is at an all-time record high, you do have a second chance to be able to evaluate what your overall risk level is. Again, with investing, think of it, buy low, sell high. The market's at an all-time high, so you might wanna be considering some defensive strategies and making sure that your portfolio lines up. And a lot of investors really don't understand how aggressive their overall portfolio is. Uh, one of the ways that you can do that is you can use some software out there. Uh, one of the softwares that we use is called Riskalyze. Uh, Riskalyze can show you what the possible outcomes of your portfolio can be over different time frames. Allow you to stress test your portfolio to see, you know, if we go through another major market shutdown, uh, you know, how would things be? But if we think about it, if we look at the overall economy, your question is, is an economic recovery in sight? It's a good question. But folks, if you're listening, what do you think is going to happen if they shut the economy down again? Right? So we saw a lot of companies go out of business in the past shutdown. Some companies didn't make it. Big names went out of business. And, you know, mom and pops went out of business. There's a lot of companies that are really, really still struggling right now and so if they shut things down yet again i think it could be an absolute disaster so i think again you've got to be very smart with what you own right now and you got to make sure that you own quality companies that can survive and thrive through what 2020 could have in store for us being able to make tactical decisions versus emotional decisions because we all know under duress that's usually when some of the mistakes uh, come out so having a game plan put in place ahead of time all starts with picking up the phone and, and speaking with people like uh, Nolan Baker, Scott Kirshner, America's Retirement Headquarters. 419-909-3319 is a number. Start developing that game plan ahead of whatever may come down the line and not necessarily a uh, market downturn due to another shutdown, but uh, whatever market downturns may happen because uh, over the course of your retirement, they will happen uh, more than once. So, so having a game plan put in place for whatever may come down the lines, 419-909-3319, that's the number to get started. This is America's Retirement Headquarters here on News Radio 1370 WSPD and 92.9 FM. We already knew that Social Security recipients will be getting a 1.3% raise next year, but now we're being told Medicare Part B premium is going to be going up by 2.7%. So let me do the math really quick, and uh, that doesn't add up. We're losing ground. Guys, is that something we just have to accept as part of retirement, or is there anything we can do to keep up? Chris, you're right. This is something that happens every year with Medicare. You know, you get the... Uh cost of living increase, but then Medicare comes along and increases the out-of-pocket expenses. Uh, for example, um, the uh, Medicare Part B premium was 144.60 for 2020. In 2019, it was 135. For 2021, it's going up to 148.50. Uh, so, you know, it's a $3.90 bump there, but not only that, but the out-of-pocket expenses for original Medicare are going up. For example, you're looking at a hospital stay going from 1408 to 1484. Uh, you're looking at uh, a lot of other increases that you have to be aware of. And if you're not keeping up on that, it, it could hit you. You know, another increase is the Part B deductible for anybody that uh, turns 65 after January 1st of 2020, Plan F and Plan C are no longer available. So the plan that's most, uh, uh, this is under a Medicare supplement, the plan that's fitting most people's needs for a Medicare supplement is Plan G. And Plan G has the deductible for Part B is up from 198 to 203 this year. Uh, and back in 2019, it was 185. So you can see that there's some gradual increases that have happens every year with Medicare. And it's very important that you stay on top of those, check with your advisor. Um, that's why we do the uh, free annual reviews to make sure that you're understanding what your out-of-pocket expenses are going to be. 
And, you know, the, the Medicare supplements are going to cover the Part A hospitalization in full, and uh, you're only going to have a deductible of 203. That's an annual deductible. Then you look at the Advantage plans, and the Advantage plans, uh, you know, the Part B deductible doesn't really come into play, but you do have some out-of-pocket expenses. Uh, you've got your hospital stays. Uh, typically, depending on the company, you're going to have day one through five or six, seven, somewhere on an average of 300 bucks a day. Then you've got your office co-pays and things like that. So it's really important to make sure that you're aware of the changes. I know I've said that a few times, but it's I, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to make sure that you're on top of those changes. And uh, the other thing is the prescriptions. Prescription cards change. The out-of-pocket limits change on those. The deductible uh, was 435 last year. Uh, the deductible moving forward into uh, 2021 is going to be 445. So, once again, yeah, the uh, cost of living increases. Uh, you get a little bump on that, but um, it seems like the government's taking it away. Definitely a one step forward, two steps back sort of situation. Uh, you know, any increases is. Better than nothing, obviously, especially if they're going to be increasing everything else around it. But being aware of it ahead of time so you're not getting blindsided, hopefully uh, that makes you more aware of it right now. But figuring out what you can do to figure out how to make the math add up, whether that is taking money out of extra retirement accounts to kind of offset that or just accounting for it in general, uh, sitting down and speaking with people. Again, before the end of the year, there's still time, uh, 419-909-3319, again, in touch with America's Retirement Headquarters, the Retirement Guys Formula, America's Medicare Associates, the numbers are the same, 419 419- 909-3319, or you can go to the website at americasretirementheadquarters.com. Uh, there was an article in Forbes recently that said a lot of people are under the assumption that it's their financial advisor's job to tell them when to get out of the market and then when to get back in, the whole timing the market thing. Is that valid? What do you guys see your job as being? Well, I think, you know, really you got to have a portfolio that lines up with somebody's individual tolerance of risk, run the analysis. You know, one of the unfortunate things that many times investors do is they panic when the market goes down and they get out and, you know, they really lock in losses and, you know, they hurt themselves and then they wait until things kind of get better. The challenge of trying to get in and out of the market is you really have to get two decisions correct. So first is you have to decide when to get out and then you have to decide when to get back in. Each decision oftentimes, you know, can happen very quick. I mean, again, just use this year as an example. You know, the market was free falling. So if somebody decided to get out of the market, the market quickly rebounded because the government stepped in with the infusion of the money. And, you know, if you didn't get back in right away, the market, you know, quickly came back and you missed out on that opportunity. Uh, it's a very painful lesson. Um, unfortunately, when it comes to investing, it's oftentimes an emotional decision. There are reasons to kind of reduce risk. You know, again, if you think about investing and we go back to the basics of investing, you buy low and you sell high uh, with the market at an all time high, maybe a time to protect some of the gains if you had a good run up this year. I've got my two kids, uh, I have a 14 year old and 17 year old. They both have stock portfolios and you know, are actively involved in the decision making process of picking out companies that they own. And, you know, they've got some cool things. Uh, my oldest son, I think it's been kind of a, a lesson for him is, you know, again, I can see with him investing in stocks, um, the fear of missing out on some different stocks that have dramatically gone up in price, or, you know, when something's not working out, just wanting to bail out and get out of it. So you really have to stop and think about why do you own what you own? And if you don't know that, I mean, talk with your financial professional. There, there could be a lot of rationale, but if you own a quality company that has a strong financial position, low debt, and you believe in it in the long run, why do you worry so much about what the market does today or tomorrow? And why would you make a knee-jerk reaction just to get rid of a quality company because everybody else is panicking? Stay out of the herd mentality and be able to focus on your long-term discipline investment plan. But uh, stress testing your portfolio can kind of help you out with you know, making those decisions. You really need to know, you know what decision you're going to make before something happens. You want to run like what I call a fire safety drill. We know looking back what the correct decision would have been earlier this year, right? It would have been to actually buy when the market was free falling. 
So if somebody had a disciplined investment approach to be able to buy into the market as those declines were happening, they would have been able to greatly benefit as the recovery happened too. It's a hindsight is twenty twenty sort of thing. There are no crystal balls when you come in and you speak with America's retirement headquarters. There are no fortune telling things. What they do have on their side is history and analytics and being able to properly gauge and say, the markets are low right now. This is what our game plan should be. Having that game plan, being able to trust in the game plan and not really deviate from it when things get a little rocky, uh, being able to take some of those emotional decisions like, like we've talked about here out of it and possibly jeopardizing your ultimate retirement. But you have to have that game plan put together. 419-909-3319 is how you get started with that. You know, uh, While things are relatively well right now, you can still take steps and set up those parameters for what happens if and when the market does take another downturn in the future. 419-909-3319. If we asked you to name the one retirement risk that worries you the most, chances are you'd probably say something about your investments not doing well, like we just talked about. But researchers at the Center for Retirement Research actually analyze the different risks, and they say the one you really should be worried about is longevity. It's called longevity risk, which seems silly to me, the risk of living too long. Can you explain why that might be? Well, I think that's, you know, again, one of the biggest fears that people have is the fear of outliving their income and outliving their money. And, you know, I think, you know, we've all seen somebody that's been in that situation and it's, uh, you know, pretty uncomfortable to have happen. And, you know, when we talk about different things, we talk about making sure that you have a plan that you're betting on uh, things living. I give you one easy example is Social Security. Uh, we teach a class at our local university on how to optimize Social Security benefits. If you look at the statistics, about 70% of people are drawing their Social Security benefits early before they reach what's considered full retirement age, which means they're not only getting a lifetime penalty for taking benefits early, they're also reducing what the survivor benefit would be with that penalty too. So if you ask them and you say, well, well, why did you take the money early? And, you know, sometimes you hear things like, well, I need to get it before, you know, what if I don't live that long? Um, you know, what if Social Security goes broke? But the reality is, is if you look at a married couple, you know, there's a very high probability that one of the two are going to live well into their 90s. And so when you're developing a plan, longevity risk should be part of the overall plan and looking to make sure that you have addressed the issues of how do you have consistent income within your plan. Uh, you can get income from things like optimizing your social security, making the correct decisions with your pensions. There are things like annuities that provide income and income benefits can be for you know, either a period of time for somebody's entire lifetime, it can be joint income options, there's a lot of choices. And, you know, even when you look at your investments, one of the things that we do is how much income does your portfolio provide? That's another area that I think that we oftentimes find and show people ways to increase the income through the dividends and interest that they get, which is much more predictable than the daily ups and downs in the market. So, that risk is a real risk. Uh, there are things that you can do about it. I'd say, again, just because maybe mom and dad or somebody else in your family passed away early doesn't mean that that'll happen for your situation. Always bet on you living a long time mm -hmm. and uh, take that longevity risk out of the equation. I would love to have the very last check I write bounce. <laughs> you know, I mean, hey, at that point, I don't care. I'm out of here. You know, I'm just got to know what day that is. Right? Just got to know what day that is. Yeah, yeah. If, if you can figure that out and work backwards, it's easy. But the truth is that most of us don't know when our last day is going to be here. So it's better to over-prepare, hope for the best, plan for the worst. And in this case, it's silly to say planning for the worst is going to be living a, a long time. But taking that into account, thanks to advances in technology, people are living longer. And thanks to advances uh, just in general in the financial realm, there are uh, things and, and strategies you can put together right now to make sure that you don't have to worry about outliving your money to figure out what that is. Speaking with America's retirement headquarters, uh, sitting down and developing that strategy to figure out, you know, whether you're 85, whether you're 95, knowing that you don't have to worry about where that money is going to come from. You know, Chris, speaking about the last day, knowing when that last day is, tomorrow is actually the last day of the annual enrollment period. You know, you, you still have one day left to make a change to your uh, Medicare prescription card or your Medicare Advantage plan. And the really nice thing about that, um, if you make that change and you don't feel comfortable with that change or something else has um, 
uh, came up that maybe a doctor or something has left the network. Open enrollment starts January 1st through March 31st to kind of get that do over, so to speak, um, that mulligan or what have you. Um, that's a way to solidify the choice you made moving forward in 2021. There is that do-over period uh, coming up at the beginning of the year, but uh, there's still time to make the right decision going forward into the 2020 year. Uh, not a lot of time, though, because like uh, Scott just said there, the end of it is tomorrow, December 7th. So no time like the present, literally, to pick up the phone and, and give a call and start developing that strategy. 419-909-3319. And you can always find them online on the website, americasretirementheadquarters.com. You've been listening to America's Retirement Headquarters here on News Radio 1370 WSPD and 92.9 FM. As always, we appreciate you taking the time out to join us. Hope you have an excellent week ahead of you. And gentlemen, before we go, I want to leave you with the final word. Well, be thankful for what you have this year. I know there were some challenges. Uh, we're very thankful for all the things that we have, and we're looking forward to the holidays and our family and really looking forward to a great 2021. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think, Chris, you were doing a little uh, wordplay there with hindsight being 2020. <laughs> Unintentional, uh, I promise. I know that. <laughs> but, hey, you know, let's stay positive. And uh, there are some great things that actually came out of 2020. Um, I know some people may not think that, but stay positive and look forward to 2021. America's Retirement Headquarters is located at 1700 Woodlands Drive in Maumee, Ohio. You can reach them by calling 419-909-3319 or online at americasretirementheadquarters.com. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussion should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Nolan Baker is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Please consult with your attorney, accountant, and or tax advisor for advice concerning your particular circumstances. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims-paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Nolan Baker, Ohio Insurance License Number 27787.